Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This week we are doing part two of the 6-inch 6 6G 6 welding test. The 6G welding test is, is one of the most common pipe welding tests. It's on a 45 degree angle and this, this week we're doing the second pass, also called the hot pass. A little review first. Remember we cleaned it up real good with a flap disc and then put the root pass in there using this little technique where you scoot the arc back and forth. Very little side to side motion just back and forth keeping it pretty much in a straight line with a really tight arc and that pushes the metal up in there inside and then when you back up it allows it to kind of melt in a little bit and uh, it, it'll, it provides a nice root pass that's not flush not poked through too much just a little bit of protrusion a little bit of reinforcement and most codes most inspectors will will buy what that what that puts in there now I'm, I'm, I'm gonna walk the cup on the second pass here I'm going to call it a second pass sometimes, sometimes a hot pass. The word hot pass is kind of misleading because on TIG welding, oftentimes you don't use any more amperage for the hot pass than you do on the root pass. In fact, I use the same exact amperage here. So what I'm doing is I'm moving fairly quickly. I'm leaving that rod in the puddle, putting a little bit of pressure on it so that if it wants to take a little rod, it'll take it and it'll satisfy the puddle and it won't try to draw metal from the back side of the root which is what you don't want the goal of the hot pass is basically to put in put in added thickness added metal material reinforcement and not disturb what you've done on the root pass and so the one thing you want to do is after that root pass is let it cool let it cool to where it's just warm give you give you a little edge on not disturbing the root pass and I'm taking a dry run here and I discovered that my cups a little loose wobbling around a good reason to take a dry run. I was using a number six gas lens cup on the root pass and I, I put a number seven on it now because it needed a number seven. It's important to have the right size cup, one that will allow you to extend the electrode out the right distance and not wobble from side to side when you're doing a hot pass. So you just want, you need a cup that lays in that bevel and allows you to extend the electrode out about like this so that you get the right torch angle and wiggles on the bevels without without really touching the the metal that you've deposited so cup size is important on walking the cup as well as how you extend the electrode you see I'm just moving fairly quickly across the middle I'm laying that 1 8 rod in there 3.2 millimeter rod in there laying the rod in there and that cools the puddle off it helps to cool the puddle off anyway and again I am put a little bit of pressure keep a little bit of positive pressure on the rod so that if if I get a little hot it might it'll let the rod feed into the puddle and kind of satisfy the puddle and and uh, the puddle will want to satisfy itself and if you don't have enough rod it will pull metal from the inside and the goal of the of the hot pass is to add metal without disturbing the root pass that you've just put in you don't want to go to all that trouble put a nice root pass in there where it's got a nice surface uh, appearance on the inside poking through just a little bit and then screw it up by welding the hot pass too hot and getting impatient and uh, and sucking it back. Now suck back means that you melt metal so much so that the inside of the root is disturbed and usually below flush. Suck back usually indicates it's below flush and that's usually not a good thing and not uh, you're not going to impress any weld inspector or weld test administrator by getting any suck back at all on a root pass so you don't want it so therefore you want to let it, let it completely cool before you do the hot pass after you've got your root in there you see there's the root after the hot pass pretty much I mean it's scaled up but it's pretty much undisturbed still poking through a little bit I didn't I didn't nip it didn't melt through or anything there are also some more 6G videos on the 2012 DVD set that uh, is available now and I'm just going to show you a bunch of little clips from it here like this chromoly 4130 tubing chromoly cluster joint the menu is laid out uh, with thumbnails so you can tell what you're watching there's some TIG welding aluminum all kinds of other things like laying in a root pass walking the cup on open butt keyholing root pass on this 2 inch schedule 86 g along with the hot pass on there some TIG welding 4140 use an ER70S2 rod, even some plasma cutting sheet metal along with some beveling, some MIG welding, troubleshooting MIG welding, what's too hot, what's too much wire feed speed, what's not, what, not enough, MIG welding aluminum with a spool gun, 
stick welding the cover pass on the 2 inch schedule 80 and just some plain old stick welding with a buzz box on AC and 6013. Lots of stuff, over a year's worth of work, over 7 hours worth of video and you can learn more about the DVD on welding-tv.com by clicking buy stuff or go to weldingtipsandtricks.com and clicking on the store nav bar button and I really appreciate you watching and appreciate your support of course you're, will, you're, you're welcome to hang around watch all the free videos that I put out every week but I do appreciate your support